ಅಕ್ಬರು ಅಲ್ಲಾಹು ಅಕ್ಬರು ಅಲ್ಲಾಹು ಅಕ್ಬರ್ ಅಶಾನು ಅಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಶಾನು ಅಲ್ಲ ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah hayya ala ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له washhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh indeed all praise is due to allah and as such we should praise him seek his help and seek his forgiveness and seek refuge in allah from the evil which is within ourselves and the evil which results from our deeds for whomsoever allah has guided none can misguide and whomsoever allah has allowed to go astray none can guide and i bear witness that there's no god worthy of worship but allah who is alone and without partner and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the last messenger of allah inna asdaq al hadith kitab allah وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار indeed the most truthful form of speech is the book of allah and the best source of guidance was the guidance brought by prophet muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and the worst of all affairs are the innovations in religion for every innovation in religion is cursed and all cursed innovation leads to misguidance and all misguidance leads ultimately to the hellfire 
Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> in today's khutbah, I would like to stress two main points, which I have seen with my own eyes and heard with my own ears. The consequence of failing to achieve. The Muslim community here in a minority circumstance is a high risk community. Back home in our countries where people grow up practicing Islam as a culture, as tradition, everybody conforms because of the pressure of the community, the relatives, etc. It is rare that you would find back home a young man or a young woman addressing their parents, their family, and telling them, I don't believe in Allah. I don't believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was a messenger of Allah. I don't believe that the Quran is a book of revelation. That is unthinkable. That is the unthinkable back home. But here in Canada, it is happening. It is happening continuously. You may not find it coming from small children, young children, but it is happening at different stages of adulthood, early adulthood, teenage, it is happening. Because our young ones, our children are at risk. Their faith is being challenged in the society and particularly in the schools, in the institutions of education. This is where their faith is challenged. We cannot afford to be complacent. Back home, yes, we could be complacent. Because the society is there as a safety net to catch those that may slip, doubt, etc., and help them back. But here, there is no safety net. There's a family, but the family is not enough. While I was in Doha, Qatar, one sister called me from here, from a religious practicing family, Islamically active, she said, my son memorized the Quran at the age of 10. Alhamdulillah, he memorized the Quran at the age of 10. And he went for Umrah, we took him for Hajj, 
prays, fast, everything. But at the age of 15, five years later, she's calling. She said he came home and told us that he doesn't believe in Allah. What should we do? We have other young children in the house. Should we kick him out? Because he could possibly affect the rest of the family members. The younger ones. He could infect them. This is a disease. What should I do? I advised her to take him to the local imam or some knowledgeable individuals from the community here to discuss with him and try to help him find his way back. This is a tragic situation. And a few days ago, I met with another young man from our community who completed his bachelor's degree at the University of Toronto, doing his master's in science subjects, etc. And he reached the same point. He said, I don't believe in Allah. His family members brought him for me to talk to him. And I spoke with him. He didn't believe in Allah. Uh, he spoke something of, yeah, well, no, I do believe in God, but in the end, when I pinned him down, he didn't believe in the existence of God. The Quran was not a miracle. Muhammad was not a prophet of God. Yes, he's a good man. He was a good man. He was known as a good man. But as he said, good people lie. Good people can lie, just like anybody else. That's where he reached. The issue is, this could happen to any of you. This could happen to any one of you. That brother who I spoke to a few days back, his family is a practicing Muslim family. Active Islamically. And the one who called me from here, same thing. So it's not just a matter of uh, those people were not good Muslims, they weren't really practicing, so and so and so. So it's not surprising. No. This is really serious. This is something that we all face. All of us who have children who are going to these institutions. And you never know when it can happen. I remember when I was here in 2012, the same thing. Another family told me, you know, here our daughter, she doesn't want to pray. She's going to university now, she wants to take off her hijab. But, you know, this was an active practicing family. When I spoke to the young lady, she said, actually, I had stopped praying from way back. Mom didn't realize it. Uh, she would pray on some occasions, but as establishing the prayer, it was gone. The belief was gone. She was just maintaining a front for her mother. 
The issue is, why? Why is this happening? On one hand, we can say the environment, because in all of these cases, these young people, surrounded by non-Muslim Canadians, who have been raised to doubt faith, secular education, which studies religions in the world religions classes as examples of fables and myths. They're all around the world. People get caught up in these fables and myths. So when they find amongst them someone who claims to be a believer, then they focus on that person. And they fire all kinds of questions at them. And of course, we haven't prepared our young people to deal with this. We haven't realized its importance, the seriousness. That these issues that are raised, our children should be firmly grounded in how to deal with these issues. We cannot afford to neglect this. We as parents need to have the answers. As a masjid, we need to have programs where we are equipping the youth with the necessary responses how to tackle these shubuhat, these doubts which will be raised in the minds of the children. We cannot afford to treat this lightly because the numbers are increasing. When I was here, I spent almost a year here back in 2012, not by choice, by Allah's Qadr and the Canadian government's will. I met a number of cases when I was here then. A number of families brought their young children young adults, to me with these kinds of ideas, doubts. Most of them were on the way. I did meet a couple who had become disbelievers, but the majority were just on the way. They were facing the doubts. They didn't know how to handle them, and I spoke with them. But the challenge remains. The challenge remains. And if we don't take constructive steps to deal with this, it is going to become an avalanche, a tsunami that is going to hit our community in such a way that we will have very difficult time standing. It will knock us over. So, I advise you, as the Prophet Wasallam advised us, when he said, Taraktu fikum amrain, intamasaktum bihima, I've left with you two things. If you hold on firmly to them, you will never go astray. Kitabullah wa sunnati. The book of Allah and my sunnah. This is the advice of the Prophet Muhammad 
which we need to implement on the highest possible scale here. As I said back home, the pressure of community, culture, tradition is enough to keep our young people in line. But here, we are all at risk. Our children, you are here in the masjid, no problem. But the young people, those in the twilight zone, between 12, the beginning of the teenage years, and the 20s. You don't see that many of that group amongst us. The masjids are filled with the older generation, 30s, 40s, 50s, and the very young who are brought in. But that generation X, they're missing to a large degree. And they are the element that is at the highest risk. From my discussion with the young man a few days ago, the thought of holding on firmly to the Quran and the Sunnah kept reverberating in my mind. This young man, though he was active Islamically and engaged in activities, he told me he even read some of my books and watched my new YouTube lectures and enjoyed them, etc. But now, he was a young adult who had his own mind to make his own decisions. And his decision was that he was not a Muslim. In the course of the discussion, I could see that he had a disconnect with the Quran. And a disconnect with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sunnah. That this was the missing link. which would leave the door open for doubt. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reconnect us. To build in our hearts through our efforts and his tawfiq a true love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A love of the messenger and a love of Allah. I ask Allah to guide us to convey that love to our children, our young people here. For Islam to be firmly embedded in their minds and their hearts. And I ask Allah's forgiveness for our negligence, our ignorance, our error in not fulfilling our responsibility to our children. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم.
الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله The time does not permit me to go into the details of the Quran and the Sunnah with regards to holding on firmly and what that means. But it is sufficient for me to say that with regards to the Quran, it involves us loving it, loving to read it, loving to reflect on its meanings, being attached to it, giving time to it. Enlightening our children to its wisdom, in such a way that they would be encouraged to love the Quran also. Because it is the love of the Quran the belief in it which caused the Prophet Muhammad on one occasion to ask his companions, who has the most amazing faith? This is an authentic hadith. Who has the most amazing faith? The companions said, the angels. She said, the angels are in the presence of Allah. They carry the revelation. How could they not believe? So who? I said, the prophets. The messengers of Allah. I said, the messengers of Allah receive revelation. How could they not believe? So who? I said, the Sahaba the companions of the prophets. Not necessarily themselves only, but all of the companions of the prophets. He said, the companions of the prophets were there with the prophets. They worked miracles and they saw them. They saw a revelation coming and how it affected. They were there. How could they not believe? So who? He said, it is a people who would come after you, who would discover a book of revelation, and they would believe in it. No messenger, no companions. these people. The Prophet ﷺ was referring to the generations that would come later, the later generations. From the Tabi'at Tabi'in and onwards. Till our time. We are a generation. We found the Quran and we have believed in it. If we truly believe in it, then our faith, as the Prophet ﷺ had said, is the most amazing faith. Because we didn't see the Messenger of Allah. وسلم, but we are believing. So this is what we have to convey to our young people. We have to connect them to the Quran intellectually, emotionally, psychologically, 
physically in such a way that they have no doubt ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين they have no doubt that this is a book of guidance that they would be guided by and also they should know rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they should know him well to understand who he was so that they should love him they would love him be thankful to allah that he was sent we have to convey this to our young so that when doubts are raised because we are in the time of doubts the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam married a young girl aisha radiyallahu anha the doubts are there the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as this individual that i spoke with a few days ago raised did not prohibit slavery so slavery is evil why not what kind of prophet is this god is condoning slavery this raised doubts in that person's mind but he didn't know how prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam treated those who were slaves the slaves who were in his household he adopted made them a part of his family they loved him so much that when their own parents came they preferred to stay with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a slave rather than go with their own parents so that connection there's a disconnect we talk about rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but we haven't conveyed who he was to our young people and that is what's going to help them be firm in their faith when they understand these doubts etc they understand the context they understand who prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was that there is no doubt he was a messenger of allah there is no doubt that the quran that was revealed to him was in fact revelation did in fact come from allah so this is our challenge my brothers and sisters to ensure that the firm hold on the quran and the sunna is conveyed to our young people conveyed in the best way not with sticks and belts and shoes hitting the kids when they don't do what we tell them to do in relationship to the quran and the sunna but in a loving way building in them the love of allah and his messenger so i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the ummah here in canada the ummah here in toronto the ummah here in abu huraira center to protect the adults and the children and those in between i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the means to fulfill our responsibility to our young ones to put them on the right path 
and to ourselves establish our own selves on the right path. Because if we are not firm, then our children cannot learn and gain firmness. If we are ourselves in doubt, shaky, Friday Muslims, Ramadan Muslims, then our children are lost. If they remain believers, it will be in spite of us, not because of us. I ask Allah to forgive our negligence and our errors and our sins with regards to our families and our children. And I ask him to protect this ummah and make it an example to other branches in this country and in this world. We, if we are sincere, can make a difference. It is not too late. We still are living. We still have means, whether intellectual, financial, etc. We need to utilize those means for the sake of Allah and for the preservation of this ummah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana وَقِنَا عَذَابِ النَّارِ رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِغْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَحَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابِ أَقِمَ الصَّلَاةِ